Travel for Source magazine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are here at the Sheriff's Office in Harvey, Louisiana, and we have the privilege in talking to Sheriff Noel Norman of Jefferson Parish. Good afternoon to you, Sheriff. Good afternoon. It's good to be with you. Um, we just have a few questions in regards to the crime that is going on here in Jefferson Parish. And again, I want to thank you for accepting us to come in and interview you today. Um, do you have any solutions for reducing crime here in Jefferson Parish? Well, we've employed many uh, different strategies in reducing crime, and in fact, since uh, the most violent years of 1990 to 94, 95, uh, not only across the country but in Jefferson Parish, we have seen steady declines in crime. In fact, in the year 2010, we posted the single lowest crime rate year since 1974, uh, with a much poorer population, obviously a much more complex society than 1974. So we're proud of the work that we've done over the many, many years in order to have these multi-year declines um, that we've experienced. So we continue to do a lot of what we um, set out after uh, the early 90s of community policing, open communication, taking a very holistic approach. There's no one panacea strategy or solution that will drive crime down. Uh, we've partnered with uh, federal authorities, state authorities, our own local council in blight remediation. I've said over and over again that there is no one singular agency that has the assets or resources necessary to do the job. It's going to take a collaboration of not only governmental entities but private citizens, uh, whether that be Neighborhood Watch or any other advocacy group, and working together to try and, and impact crime. If there were no restrictions, what would you do to deter the crime here in Jefferson Parish? Well, I mean, I, I don't spend much time thinking about whether or not there were no restrictions, because there are restrictions. I mean, the beauty of this country is that there are constitutional safeguards where, whereby there's a balance of interest between this general citizenry and government. Law enforcement, uh, especially in government, is unique. It's one of the only branches of government that's allowed to shoot and kill somebody, uh, to beat somebody, uh, to do things in a very overt way that typically is not accepted in society. But if there is good reason for that to occur, for example, in both of those cases in the protection of life, limb, and property, uh, we're allowed to do so. You don't see that in any other branch of government. So it is um, something that we take very seriously in understanding what our obligation is, but I don't really spend a lot of time reflecting on, well, what if this was Russia, or what if this was Pakistan, or what if this was Iran, you know, and I could, as a governmental leader, do whatever I want. It's not reality. Um, you know, I, I look at the challenges that we have, and I very much cherish uh, the relationships that we have in the community, whether it be the neighborhood watch block captains or community civic groups, the clergy, for example, with our cops and clergy program and others that are trying to make a difference each and every day. Okay. There were 52 murders in Jefferson Parish in 2010. What are you going to do to reduce that number this year? Well, I've often said that there's not a whole lot that we can do in a proactive and or a reactive way that's going to influence the murder rate. Um, the sad reality of the vast majority of the murders are that they are what we call relational murders where the victim and the perpetrator know one another and they solve conflict by virtue of killing one another. So there's not a whole lot and I say this very often, so let's say, for example, you and your significant other get into a heated argument today and he decides to kill you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a strategy that I can utilize that's going to avert that murder? Well, no. Mm -hmm. And so we see a lot of those, whether it be child abuse murders, whether it be domestic situations, whether it be uh, drug dealer, uh, drug user, 
uh, that bring them to the game. You know, if you're, if you're in, uh, involving yourself in very dangerous activities, uh, unfortunately there are disastrous outcomes. Uh, so it's very hard. Now, having said that, there are obviously some things that we do if we able to put a significant drug dealer or a player in jail. Well, we know that's one less person that can wreak havoc out on the streets. But to point to any one thing that we do and provide empirical data to support it is almost impossible. What are you doing to keep the residents of Jefferson Parish safe? Well, as I said earlier, I mean, we, we look at things very holistically. We've utilized technology in a very smart way. Uh, we are the leaders of technology in, in this state. Um, we just opened a significant crime lab. Uh, that's one of the, the leading crime labs in the whole Gulf South. Uh, we utilize technology so it means sense in, in an effective and efficient way. Uh, our relationships, as I said, with our federal, state, and local partners, our relationship with the, with the clergy, our relationship with the media, uh, our relationship with parish government and other players that we foster each day, uh, you know, keep it in mind that we're just trying, as cliche as it sounds, to provide a safe place to live, work, and raise your family. I mean, that's about as simplistic as it can be put. So we will continue to be innovative. We will continue to provide good, clean, aggressive law enforcement with compassion uh, because we must uh, hold and maintain the respect that the community has for our organization day in and day out. It doesn't do me a lot of good to be very successful if I don't have the respect of the community. Um, I very much advocate and preach long-term thinking all the time. We don't do things for short-term gain and short-term short -term returns. We're always thinking long-term in this organization as to how we're going to impact the community. And do you think that your department have the respect of the community? I believe that we have. All of the opinion polls say that we do, and uh, I believe that we do based on the, the quality of cooperation that we get from citizens that are otherwise fearful for whatever reason. Uh, they've come to grow and trust in us and we've been able to deliver the service uh, to them. I get letters every day uh, thanking us for the work that we do, the manner in which folks are treated. I am not tolerant of situations where we don't treat people with respect. Uh, and that we don't do it the appropriate way. In fact, I tell my guys all the time, we do not need to bend the rules to make an arrest. If they're bad and they're dirty and they're playing the crime game, there's always tomorrow. I'd rather get them the right way once than get them the wrong way 20 times because uh, it isn't about the stats for me. It's about doing things the appropriate way, the right way, and, and we will reap the benefit uh, of that if we continue to do it that way.